So anyway, folks, as you may or may not be aware, um, <clears throat> I've been looking forward to this for quite a long time. Uh, this is going to be the video content specifically on the smiley face murder uh, murder mystery and theories um, of the smiley face killer. Huh. And um, I'm quite proud of this one, uh, for sure. But, you know, you may notice that sometimes uh, I look into these things a little more and I'll chuckle just a little bit. Because I'm aware that, you know, true crime is a very serious subject. But at the same time, you know, you got to admit, like the latest story, uh, when somebody in an orange costume was, looked like he was dressed up as an orange or something like that, apparently ran out on the football field to try uh, to steal all the Gatorade from the stand. You know, you can't make that kind of stuff up. And so, you know, um, that is uh, on purpose. I I try to bring a little bit of um, light uh, light energy to to some very grim realities uh, that deal with deal with true crime. And so, anyway, with the smiley face murders, I'm going to be discussing specifically here with you guys, Dakota James. What happened to Dakota James? Um, for sure, and uh, also what may have happened to some of these other victims, specifically the river victims. In New York, because we're going to be, uh, there's going to be some information that's made public that's never been seen before, and this will be quite eye-opening. Should be very enlightening. So look forward to this. Thank you. All right, so folks, this is what it is all about, for sure. These are the smiley face uh, murders and the smiley face killers, alleged victims that have been documented over the years is just a fascinating thing to really delve into. It says hundreds of college-aged men across the U.S. have died as the result of undetermined or accidental drowning. While many believe their deaths are just incidental or an accident, former NYPD detective Ken and Gan uh, Kevin Gannon and Michael Donovan, as well as uh, Anthony Duarte, as and their uh, professor for criminal justice, Dr. Lee Gilbertson, are now convinced that most of these drownings are no longer a coincidence, and they must indeed be homicides in their view. In the majority of the cases... The victims were successful students and athletes who disappeared after a night out drinking with friends, and they were ultimately found dead in a body of water. At some of the sites where the victims' bodies were found, smiley face graffiti has been alleged to be left behind. Local police have theorized for a while that these were men who simply got drunk, fell in the water, and then drowned. But Gannon, Donovan, Duarte, and Gilbertson investigated their uh, death as the work of an organized group of serial killers dubbed the Smiley Face Killers. The team believes that the serial killers are highly sophisticated and communicate with each other on the dark web. More than a dozen of these cases have been outlined over the years inside Gannon and Gilbertson's uh, new book, Case Studies in Drowning Forensics, but there are six deaths in particular that stand out as potential smiley face murders. Dakota James. Dakota James disappeared from his apartment after a night out drinking in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The last known sighting um, was when he was caught on surveillance in the downtown Pittsburgh area. The following morning, he never showed up for work and his body was discovered in the Ohio River. Number two, Tommy Booth. Tommy Booth disappeared on January 19, 2008, from a bar in Pennsylvania. He had celebrated his 21st birthday, but his body was later discovered in the river, uh, actually in a creek right behind. There was no signs of real trauma. A smiley face was painted in the area. Number three, Lucas 
Homan. On September 29, 2006, 21-year-old Lucas Homan vanished from La Crosse, Wisconsin. The day he disappeared, Homan had been celebrating Oktoberfest with a few friends. After a night of hopping around the bar, Homan and his best friend somehow were separated, and uh, they were stranded in that area. After an ER detox, they still couldn't tell what happened that night. Number four, Todd Guybe. Todd Guybe disappeared in Casnovia, Michigan on June 12, 2005. His head and shoulders were sticking out of the water in the lake. Number five, William Hurley. William Hurley went missing after a Bruins hockey game in Boston, Massachusetts. Hurley walked outside one night near the, the water area, and he never returned. The man um, that Hurley said his cell phone battery was going dead, but they couldn't follow up on that. Hurley's body was found in the Charles River, not far outside. Number six, Brian Welsing. Brian Welsing went missing from Chicago, Illinois, in the year 2000. And that's why this is interesting, folks. Um, this is the same area of Aribi Contine, Jelani Day, and several other victims. So Nick Young, he stayed behind, but Wisen started to throw up after his uh, incident at the bar. After an extensive search, Wisen's body was found 77 days later on March 17th. His blood al alcohol concentrate was less than 8%. Police have not said if a smiley face was present near the death site, although a lot of reports confirm that there was. So, this is interesting, folks. And we're going to see, really, why... Um, People need to be looking at this very, very closely now. You know, I've had commenters um, comment before, you know, what what's this going on with Galarza, that he may have been involved in a love triangle? Well, I can't comment on that. Um, it's specific yet. I could tell you detectives did interview uh, Galarza at a minimum. But um, in this particular case, we're going to find out some other very interesting things about uh Mr. Uh, Galarza. So stay tuned because this is going to blow away expectations as far as these will be things we have never heard before. And these are all related directly to the smiley face murders. Thank you again. So Puerto Ricans love to drink. And this is an exclusive article from a long time ago discussing the data changes they've had in um, the uh, instances of spiked cocktails and, uh, you know, drinks. Now, what's very interesting, of course, about all of this is that um, a lot of Puerto Rico's specific cocktails and uh, specialty mixes have a component called GHB inside it. And there's going to be uh, some interesting information about this also linked to the actual video that people will be able to explore. Uh, but there is um, there's a lot that has not been said about this yet. And what's interesting, of course, is uh, in the Illinois cases, Mosby, I believe that's his name, um, and Bertolino, you know, they had a few bankruptcies. There's a number of bankruptcies which has been confirmed, court records. And um, that is also linked uh, to the fact that they love to uh, consume so much GHB. And this is going to be discussed and uh, covered because when you see how San Juan... Puerto Rico is kind of still the capital of GHB consumption, you're going to view the whole smiley face murder situation very, very differently 
and uh, particularly based upon the evidence that's going to be showcased and revealed about what really appears to be going on. And this has been going on for a long time. Make no mistake about it. Any of the smiley face situation has been going on in uh, Puerto Rico before it was even here in America. That's correct, and we're going to learn why. All right, this is very, very important to document right now for some reason. I'm going to be doing a screencast recording later on this very subject. Okay. So far, allegations and things like that are circumstantial. They're rumors, etc. But this very interesting that has to be documented here now. This is none other than Kenny Boo. Now, Kenny Boo, he lives in, believe it or not, Atlanta, Georgia. The interesting thing about everything you do with them. Um, Kenny Boo. He's these direct friends with Laura James, the sister of Dakota James, who was killed in the river. That's um Going around out there, it's a big rumor of the smiley face killers. Now what's interesting about this is he's also friends with another member of the James family, which is highly unusual. And we find out he's the neighbor, he's the uh, actual neighbor. None other than Matthew Lands. And Matthew Lands recently was discovered at the Pentagon trying to stab someone. And that, of course, leads us to where we really need to go. Kenny Boo also happens to be a friend of um, Collins and Collins that's very interesting because Bobby and Collins and so on are indirect friends of Juan Galarza that's correct. Juan Galarza. Along with Veronica Russell James, who was the direct cousin of Dakota James, who was drowned and died in the river. Belinda Collins was the direct cousin of uh, Abby Collins, who is the one who keeps being spotted in Illinois. And um, on top of that, Bobby and Nelson. That's correct. Bobby and uh, Nelson. Essentially being the brother of Noah Nelson.
Right there we see him once again. And Collins also. This is all very important to document because the suspicion is as we look right here. This is a profile um, on another different media account for none other than Juan Galarza. He calls himself Juan Killer. And he has some very interesting music tracks. So, the reason why this is very important um, to document, especially his connection to James and Collins, is this proves that um, Mr. Juan Galarz was a very good friend of none other than Abby Collins. And, of course, him being engaged to Alison Menjivar connects another dot right there. And then, of course, him being a friend for some reason of James as well as Laura James really starts to connect some dot, dots right here. Now, we could speculate that at least... At a minimum, because Juan Galarza also knew Nelson, uh, Noah Nelson's direct brother, very well, that they had something to do with the death of Dakota James, point blank. Because Kenny Boo also knew Matthew Lands and was a good friend, of course, of... Um, Bobby and Nelson. And it makes no sense then that Kenny Boo would also be a very good friend of Juan Galarza, once again, unless they all were involved somehow. So, true, these, these are just allegations for right now, but I'm getting a, a distinct feeling uh, that Kenny Boo, Juan Galarza, Noah Nelson, Fabian Nelson, and so on, are connected directly, as well as Collins, are connected directly to this group known as the Smiley Face Killers or Smiley Face Murderers. Now, so far, this is circumstantial, but it's showing some interesting, uh, relevant facts. And the reason it matters very, very much in this particular case is it looks like Juan Galarza knew what happened to Jensen and may also have known what happened to Colteen as well because they could just be simply written off and seen as just some murders that they were connected to. But the more you look into the actual group here and you look into Kenny Boo and so on, you see that more and more this is looking at least plausible that Juan Galarza is, in fact, tied to the smiley face killers and his brothers uh, fighting in the MMA is no coincidence. Thank you. That's it for now. This is very important to document for some reason. This is Juan Galarza, Juan Galarza Jr.'s personal Tumblr art account. And he has on here inst just very strange, interesting drawings of faces and specifically of women also who are taking spiked cocktails, you know, at the bar, essentially. And uh, a couple of them look exactly like the woman or 
people who have been reporting on the smiley face killer murder mystery. Now this is essentially Juan Galarza's personal Tumblr account and art, so there's no mistaking it. And it is very, very strange. It is admittedly very bizarre. And uh, it, this is going to be <clears throat> documented. It's called The Art of Juan de Larza. Now, he's married, essentially, or was married to Alison Menjivar. And he also knows Abby Collins, of course. And so... I'm going to say at this point, you know, you can say what you like, uh, Miss Menjivar, but I suspect that your former husband is a serial killer, in fact, and may, may be, given the inferred evidence that's starting to show up, may be tied directly to the smiley face murders that are going on that's correct in the eastern half of the United States now I mean some of this is, is conclusive enough to just say there, there's something very wrong here but I'm not saying that he necessarily killed Jelani Day or something himself I'm just pointing out the amount of evidence that is accumulated shows he was directly involved. And he is somehow tied to the Smiley Face murders. Thank you again. Just a very brief and <clears throat> quick update since uh, I'm busy for right now, but um, it has been alleged, uh, not confirmed yet, but alleged that Galarza is uh, tied directly to what's known as the Smiley Face uh, Killers. And smiley face murders, uh, very, very possibly. So this video is going to be on that topic for just a second. There are some strong allegations pointing to a kind of South American-run uh, network. Galarza is a part of that network, and at least the allegations point to him and specifically because of his involvement also in the MMA. He was nicknamed, or he was nicknamed the, the Babyface uh, Killer, etc. That he's involved with the Smiley Face murders or the Smiley Face Killers themselves. They each come from East Peoria, Illinois, including Abby Collins, uh, Allison Menjivar, uh, Noah Nelson and uh, another person, each of them also attended conferences or faith-based group talks by Matthew C. Everett and so on. So that connected a couple of them, at least Abby and Allison Menjivar to the Missouri uh, homicides. So there's allegations out there and we're going to explore those very soon just simply as allegations, because that's what they are. Uh, so far, they, they would connect uh, Galarza and someone else also directly to these uh, smiley face murders that have occurred in Missouri a lot. So thank you. There will be an update on that after the Samantha Sperry case uh, goes live again with, with the map. Thank you. Okay, this has to be documented right now for some reason. <clears throat> This is a fairly disturbing thing. This would be Juan Galarza, the older Galarza's personal cartoon creation software or scheme, as it were. Now, I know people are out there, they're saying, 
there isn't anyone who's like, you know, a real smiley face killer or, or so forth. Um, but I would say definitively, this makes it 100% clear that there is something uh, very much related to the smiley face killer going on out there. Because why in the world would anyone design something like what was just shown there, right? Why would people do that? Is this Juan Galarza's personal cartoon creation? And as you can see, It's disturbing. This type of evidence definitely points in the direction uh, of Juan Galarza most certainly being heavily involved with whatever this smiley face killer actually is. Thank you. So folks, for right now, this, this will be, of course, included in the speculation, speculation section of the video that we do on the river based uh, smiley face murders but this is very disturbing and this would definitely qualify as uh, inferred evidence that something is very very rotten uh, with Galarza himself the participants of my research are young people from San Francisco de Ticato University who fit perfectly the profile of the people I want to reach. Where the project is implemented, San Francisco de, de Kaito University. I should present my project for three days in different places of the university. He also speaks somewhere else about presenting it to the Illinois University, which is interesting. <clears throat> I'm just going to say that it's interesting because it says, write the questions for the box. Questions you were going to ask the audience. Did the box catch your attention? Did you like the design of the character inside the box? What would you change to the design of the box? Did you read the captions? Which one do you like the most? Did you already know the legends you read about related to the box? And this is the box. Right here. I don't know, folks. This is very, very disturbing. Speculation so far. But more and more, I have come to conclude Mr. Galarza is very much related to the smiley face killers for a fact. Maybe he would be like the lead smiley face killer and you see it was his younger brother who put together this box which makes no sense. That's true, because he also was called Juan Galarza, uh, Galarza. But then there's another brother, or perhaps it's just his brother-in-law, but it looks exactly like what you would think his brother would look like. Uh, that, that is, in fact, his brother. He's younger, and he's also called Juan Galar uh, Galarza. I'm sorry. So what I believe has been uh, revealed by this for sure, is Mr. Galarza 
the senior one who uh, goes to the boat club and everything in Florida and also is on faculty at Illinois State. I believe he committed definitely some murders. But I also believe that his younger brother who put together this box for some bizarre purpose may in fact be related to this as well and may be related to the smiley face killers because he's friends, of course, with Noah Nelson. And then we see, of course, he is direct friends with Allison Menjivar. Now, Galarza goes on to deny this but we have all the hard evidence and proof to show Alison Menjivar and Juan Galarza were married and were going to be married within less than, I don't know, a few weeks um, before all the other things that were to go on. So I firmly believe she is most certainly involved. I think that they may have killed Jensen. And I for certain suspect that one of them was involved in the death of Dakota James. This will be filed under uh, circumstantial speculation. But the death of Dakota James, I believe, definitely occurred on Galarza's watch. That's what matters. Again, folks, there comes a time when it stops being pure coincidence. This was Juan Galarza, uh, Juan Galarza Jr.'s personal Instagram. It's very uh, disturbing. Here's he and his brother's favorite song. You can't make this up. Turn me up, can't turn me down, cut the lights off. I was taught to never love no one, but trust in your slugs. I can't F that raw, so pull up the sticks and knock his head off. These are the lyrics to Juan Galarza's favorite song, apparently. Now, this part. A long time ago, there was a graduate of an advanced age who always had problems with several students. One day, one of these students made the decision to teach the teacher a lesson. This boy left with a group of classmates at the time of departure to the third floor where he was in the teacher. When he passed through the corridor, they took him by surprise when he wanted to escape and fell from the third floor, causing him immediate death. Now, Kenny Boo apparently has a profile as similar um, so I no longer take that as any kind of coincidence I believe for certain that Mr. Galarza was involved most likely in the death of Dakota James and probably someone uh, else maybe Patrick McNeil to be exact um, I don't know if that proves that they're connected to the smiley face killer or not. But, but everything that's been shown every step of the way shows that, uh, that even uh, if the smiley face killer wasn't really a thing, at least one of them is probably the smiley face killer that they made up. So... You know, this is serious stuff. People have asked before, you know, when you're going to do other things like games and so on. I'm probably going to do game type content, social content and things once a month. Because this is the most important thing, you know, at this time, for sure. And this is... uh this is some pretty serious stuff. This is definitely what we call true crime. It's very strange what happened to Jelani Brinson. My last thing I'll say here. Jelani Brinson was in the state of Minnesota 
close to uh, where some of these guys, including Galarza and apparently Noah Nelson, often go to have their fun. Jelani Brinson never returned. I don't think it's any coincidence. When you see them having writing like that about a teacher and a student, I just doubt that there's really any coincidence there. Thank you again. So I really enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it and the content of course is all exclusive and it includes right now at this point kind of theories and speculation but also hard evidence showing um, a timeline and there's a lot of theories that I'd love to go over and cover uh, when we speak about this much much more publicly this this Christmas but you know the biggest one I was going to say is it's 100% undeniable now uh, Mr. Galarza the Galarza brothers in specific are definitely serial killers. They've definitely been involved in murders. Um, they appear to be obsessed with the smiley face symbol and smiley face type of artwork. And so the main thing I was going to point out about that fact is San Juan, Puerto Rico is infamous for having GHB spiked drinks. And I believe with my working theory that I based upon hard evidence, and there's a lot more than I've shown uh, on the video, of course, is that the Galarza brothers started out as the official smiley face killers or, or starting that group up. Uh, but then Kenny, you know, for certain, and others, and perhaps no one else as well, came along and joined the actual smiley face killers uh, to start going out and recreating his work. And there's some disturbing things I found on Kenny, on Nelson especially. They have similar, the same profiles as uh, Galarza in particular has. So it's enough hard evidence to say, yeah, they were most definitely involved. Allison appears to have been involved as well in some way to this mystery. But um, can't show all that right now. They have a lot in common with certain people and boy, they absolutely love smiley faces. That's correct. You heard it here first. They do. And so to see that they <clears throat> may in fact be involved in the death of Dakota James is a very, very high possibility. Thank you. Like, comment, subscribe. For the end of the video.